Hi there. Welcome to the very first episode of Cineblog. My name is Jared Valky. I'm a Toronto-based cinematographer, editor, and filmmaker. Welcome to the very first episode of my vlog. Uh, this is something that I've really wanted to do for a long time. Uh, you know, I'm hoping to share some of the things that I've learned, uh, some of my experiences, and just, you know, uh, in general, cinematography tips, editing tips, filmmaking tips, because it's a very hard art. You know, I've learned a lot over the years, and to be honest, I'm still learning every single day uh, I'm learning new things, trying to hone my skills. I've realized that, you know, teaching is something that really, really gives me positive energy and it really makes me happy. So I'm really excited and I hope you are too. So welcome to the welcome to the first episode. So a little bit about me. Right now I'm working at a large company that is in the beauty industry. So they're kind of a design manufacturing company that work with a lot of the, the world's top brands and uh, I run all of their video productions. And also, besides that, I, myself and uh, my partner, Wakas, uh, we have a business called Pack of Mustaches Media. There's a link below, uh, so check out our page, check out our website, check out our work. Uh, we do a lot of corporate music video stuff, but we also do a lot of short films and filmmaking stuff, so be sure to check out that stuff because it's a lot of fun. Uh, also, um, I work a lot on the side doing short films uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, like film projects. Uh, another thing I'm working on right now is a Spider-Man fan film, which the first episode is going to be releasing in the next few months. Uh, I'll also link that below too because that's one of my more recent projects and I'm really, really proud of some of the cinematography that uh, I've done for that. And I'll probably use a lot of examples from, you know, some of the work on that web series uh, in this vlog. Because I think um, uh, I was working with a lot of great people, uh, really ha got the opportunity to take my time with a lot of the cinematography and um, you know the other people behind it are very creative so that I'm really proud of some of that work so um, check it out, uh, it's pretty awesome. Every episode I'm hoping to give, go over a couple of topics and one of them will always be uh, cine cinematography tips. So something that you can do with cinematography, very easy, very simple tips that sometimes maybe you didn't think about and sometimes these are things that I've learned over the years and I thought, wow, that's such a simple tip, but you know, if I really think about how to apply that to a shot, it can really add a much more cinematic look to the shot. Today's first tip is basically um, creating depth. So creating depth in your shots is a really, really easy way to make something look cinematic. And uh, if you look at this example here, uh, I placed this shot of this little statue head. Um, I didn't have a real person with me right now. But um, you know, in this first example, you can see that I've kind of positioned him right up against a busy background. I know it's just a kitchen, but uh, you know, you can see that the little head doesn't really stand out from the subject matter that's behind. So now, if you take a look, I positioned the head on, the, on this on my kitchen counter, but I've created I've made sure there's lots of depth behind him now, and you can kind of see that already it's starting to look a little more cinematic. Like the subject is now popping, you know, out of the background. Now this is a really really easy tip whether you're doing you know corporate videos, music videos, anything. It's a general cinematography tip. You know if you position your subject matter in a way where basically there's tons of depth behind them. Now, I've done a ton of corporate videos and one thing I find is, um, you know, sometimes I'm filming in like a manufacturing plant. So what I try to do is shoot a machine or, or a, somebody working and I try to position it so that, like, you know, like the entire factory or the entire manufacturing plant is behind them. Because first of all, it makes the subject matter pop from, you know, in the frame and it really makes you focus on that one subject, uh, that one subject, uh, and it also kind of you know adds a level of like uh, I like to call it you know like scope, and you know I think that that's an important thing for both corporate videos in terms of a lot of times companies want to show the scale of their you know their facilities, and in a scene sometimes it makes you know it makes the the set that you're on or the scene that those characters are in it makes it feel large and there's lots of depth and it kind of can help tell the story. I mean, in a scene, sometimes it won't work because maybe you want your subject matter to feel enclosed in space, I understand, but um, in terms of like adding, you know, a nice cinematic look, that's a very, very easy tip and general rule that I like to follow. So try it out. Um, 
all it takes sometimes is to just position the camera or, you know, when you're blocking your scene or you're talking with the director, just think about it. Hmm, like, you know, we're in this kitchen, we're in this apartment, we're in this, like, park. Do we want the subject against a wall or a tree or, you know, why don't we position them so that, like, you know, the scope of this area is behind them and it'll make them pop. I think that's a very good tip. And I think it can also help, you know, orient your, your characters or orient your subject matter within the space that they're in. Because, you know, now the shots are kind of not only showing the subject matter, but showing a little more of where they are. And uh, another tip too is that if you can find a space that has a lot of depth, sometimes, um, you know, you have a camera like a cine lens or, or a prime lens that has a really wide aperture. So it's really easy to create that depth of field. But sometimes if you're more limited by the lenses that you have, uh, like for example, sometimes I'll be using the Sony um, PXW Z150, which is kind of more of a documentary camera. But the thing is you don't have as much control with the lens. The widest it goes is F4. So it's kind of hard to make that subject matter pop by simply, you know, lessening the, the range of focus that the lens is giving you. But, you know, if you can find an area that has a lot of depth, you know, you can kind of make the subject pop uh, if you don't have a lens that has a really wide aperture. So the second thing I want to talk about is basically, I'm trying to think of just very simple things that I've had to overcome and maybe I can give my two cents to you guys on what to do. So the next topic I want to talk about is basically thinking about uh, cases, bags, and storage for your equipment. Um, so I've bought a ton of camera equipment over the years and you know, I've always found it's a, you buy something and then afterwards you basically are like, hmm, where am I gonna put that, that gear? Where am I gonna put that lens? How am I gonna organize that equipment? And uh, I've compiled like a little bit of a list of, you know, things that I thought I could talk about. Um, basically, the first thing I thought to think about is, you know, how expensive is your equipment? To be fair, cases and bags can get really, really expensive. You know, really take into account like how expensive your gear is. You know, like, are you buying a really expensive camera? You know, that's maybe like over a thousand dollars. Maybe you'll consider getting a hard case, you know, like an Anuk case, which is a Canadian version of Pelican or a Pelican case, you know, like, cause then, then you know, it's crush proof, it's drop proof, etc. Do you think that it just needs a bag, you know, like a camera backpack or a fabric bag? Cause those are usually just as durable. They're lighter, but you know what I mean? Like you just got to think about like, what is the value of your equipment and what kind of like, how, how expensive do you want to, how much money do you want to put into a case or a bag? Another important thing to think about when you're buying a case or a bag is, you know, future equipment that you think that you'll be getting. Because um, sometimes, like, I'll have this too. It's like, oh man, do I really want to spend like, you know, that extra amount of money to get like a bigger case when I don't really need that right now? But then you have to think, you know, like in the next year or two, are you going to be getting more lenses? Are you going to be getting more accessories? Like, and are they going to need spaces? So, you know, that's a very important thing. Like, as an example, this is the Pelican Air case that I use for my main camera and lenses. So, at first I only had two lenses, but then now you can see I have three, and eventually I'm probably gonna have four, but you can see that I kind of went and bought the bigger case because I thought, you know, that I knew that I'd be getting more lenses and I knew that I kind of wanted to keep them all in the same case. So, you know, basically I bought this case with the idea that, you know, there's gonna be more equipment coming. Uh, and this is also kind of a funny one, but what kind of look are you trying to create? I know we're talking about bags and cases, but let me explain. Basically, when you're, say that you're doing a lot of corporate videos or you're working for a client, which is something that I've done a lot, you know, you kind of want to sell yourself as a creative professional. So sometimes I think, you know, if you have professional looking cases for your gear, it kind of adds a level to how professional you look. Sometimes if you have like, you know, a bunch of black Pelican cases or they all kind of are uniform, it kind of sells to the client that you are organized and you're a professional. You know, like, are you gonna be bringing your camera in like your backpack? That doesn't look very professional, right? So that's kind of another benefit of, you know, spending a little bit more on bags. It can add that professional look when you're with clients. I know that's a really funny thing to talk about, but it makes sense when you really think about it. Um, also, another thing to think about is too many bags or cases can be a problem. 
Uh, I know I've had a couple of shoots where sometimes like we have like 10 or 12 different bags like small big like you know for the audio for the camera for the lights and sometimes you're like everybody's carrying all these cases and you get somewhere and it's hectic and you're like crap where did we put all these cases that kind of fits with what I was saying about when you buy a case and kind of think about future equipment. Like sometimes if you buy a bigger case and you can kind of think about, you know, what equipment's gonna go where. Um, a one easy tip is I went to Walmart and for 20 or $30, I bought this giant black storage case. And basically what I've done on shoots is, uh, you know, me and my team members will actually put a bunch of our equipment cases into this one big case so that when we arrive, instead of carrying all these little cases around, we just have this one big case and it helps also keep all of our equipment organized so we don't lose stuff. And then we can also kind of throw little accessories that we need into there. Think about what needs to be accessed uh, easiest. Um, like I found when I kind of put together my Pelican with my camera and lenses, I found it's very, it's very easy, it's very accessible. You can pop it down, open it. I have all my selections of lenses. If I've worked with like assistants or ACs, they find it very easy. They can just open it. They know that the batteries are there, the different lenses are there when we're switching them. Um, so that's another thing that's kind of accessible. So yeah, that's my very first episode of Cine Vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I subscribe, like this video, and please, 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 I would love for you to comment below with anything uh, that you would like to learn. You know, a topic, something you'd like me to discuss, and hopefully if I have some experience with it, I can share that with you because I really, really want to know what you guys want to learn. So thanks for watching uh, and excited to uh, continue with this.